pay one. This could be the end of the line for NHL great Marcel Leon. And the sporting world says goodbye to a great one, Secretary. Sports Desk is brought to you by Motomaster. Built tough, back tough. Available at Canadian Tire and by Xerox Canada. Sports Desk with John Wells. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the early edition for Wednesday, October the 4th. Up front today, Game 2 in the American League Championship Series. Yesterday, Blue Jay veteran Dave Steeb didn't have quite enough, and that doubled the pressure on the youngster on the mound for Game 2. 20 years after his dad helped the Miracle Mets, young Todd Stottlemyre took to the mound for the most important game of his life. Up front today, Game 2 in Oakland. Todd Stottlemyre and Mike Boer, the starting pitchers in Game 2. Stottlemyre with a 10.13 ERA in three starts last year against Oakland. Boer, an important free agent signing by the A's last winter. But the difference in this series so far is that Ricky Henderson plays in Oakland. He was on base three times, scored twice, and broke up a crucial double play opportunity in Game 1. And in Game 2, he walked, stole second and third, and scored the tying run in the bottom of the fourth inning on a base hit by Carney Lansford. Stottlemyre threw more than 30 pitches in that fourth inning. One of them, Mark McGuire, whacked down the left field line to score Lansford with the go-ahead run. Make it 2-1 Oakland at this point in the game. Meanwhile, the Toronto offense continues to struggle, and even when the hitters make contact, players like Tony Phillips were on hand to rob Lloyd Mosby of a base hit and save what would have been the tying run. Nelson Luriano was stranded at third. And while the Blue Jay bats were silent, Oakland's big hitters were getting to Stottlemyre. Dave Parker hit the first pitch of the Oakland sixth into the right field bleachers for his first ever postseason home run. Hard to believe. And when Mark McGuire followed with his third hit of the game, Stottlemyre was gone in favor of Jim Acker. The line score for Stottlemyre read three runs on seven hits through five-plus innings. Acker couldn't do much better. Two hits and a sacrifice fly later, he was gone. The A's had a 5-1 to one lead, and Oakland is 88-4 and four this season when leading in the late innings. Acker replaced by David Wells. Henderson was back at it in the last of the seventh inning, stealing third and later scoring on a Toronto error. Henderson now with six steals in as many attempts in the first two games of this series. The Jays' big hitters threatened in the eighth as Toronto loaded the bases with nobody out. Griff delivered one run with a single to right field, and Bell delivered another when he grounded into a double play. But the rally fell far short. Oakland prevails 6-3, leads the series 2-0. So quickly, it's a long way back for the Toronto Blue Jays. We'll be back in Toronto for games three and four of the series, for sure, coming up at the Sky Dome on Friday and Saturday. We hope to send you live to Oakland for some reaction from Mark Jones this afternoon. First, though, tickets for trivia. We have ten pair for game four in the series on Saturday at the Sky Dome. Today's question coming up just a little bit later on on Sports Desk. And just ahead, the National League Series opens in Chicago tonight. Uh, we'll have a quick preview. More people are going to Canadian Tire for brake service than anywhere else. So if you're not, what's stopping you? Trust Canadian Tire, Canada's number one choice for brakes. Presenting a cure for premature baldness. Just bring your vehicle where most people come for precision wheel alignment services. Canadian Tire. Trust Canadian Tire, Canada's number one choice for wheel alignments. Xerox announces a breakthrough in office technology. Ears to listen with, to listen to your wants, your needs, to understand your business environment before we try to fit our products into it. It's a startling new concept in the world of office technology. It's also a promise. Until our ears have done their job, we'll keep our mouths closed. We answer to you. The baseball spotlight will shift to the National League for the next 48 hours. Wrigley is sold out as Cub fans get set to celebrate. It has been a long time between league titles and an eternity since the Cubs last won the series. 
As expected, though, the Cubbies are the underdogs. The matchup for game one of the National League showdown in Chicago. The Giants begin with Scott Geraltz, 14 and 5. The Cubs are relying on their ace of the staff, Greg Maddox, who came close to 20 wins in 1989. Neither team has much of an advantage in the catching department. Terry Kennedy is the veteran who knows what the playoffs are all about. Chicago's Rick Runham is young, but hits well with runners on base. We'll call this matchup even. At first, San Francisco's Will Clark against Chicago's Mark Grace. Both are strong defensively, but Clark is the best all-round hitter in the league, and he's hitting almost 500 with men in scoring position. No question, the ad is to Clark. At second base, San Francisco's Robbie Thompson has struggled against right-handers. And tonight, he'll be facing one of the best in Greg Maddox. So give the edge at second base to Chicago's Ryan Sandberg. His experience will be a big plus on a young Chicago ball club. The Cubs also have an advantage at shortstop, where Sean Dunstan gets the knob over Jose Uribe. At third base, the Giants have finally found someone to hit behind Kevin Mitchell. Matt Williams has played in only 84 games this year. But during that time, Williams hit an impressive 18 homers and collected 50 RBI. No contest in left field. Kevin Mitchell of the Giants versus Dwight Smith of the Cubs. Mitchell will likely win the National League MVP. 47 homers, 125 RBI. The one concern here is that Mitchell is hitting just 189 against the Cubs pitching so far this year. Over in center, Brett Butler will give San Francisco all kinds of speed and experience. Jerome Walton is also very good defensively and he'll likely win Rookie of the Year. Give another check mark to the Giants here. In right field, no question, Andre Dawson up against Pat Sheridan. Dawson has been awful against the Giants this year, but he's still the man you want up there with the game on the line. And finally, the pitchers. This matchup looks pretty even. San Francisco's Scott Geraltz won the National League ERA title this year, while Greg Maddox won 19 games for the Cubs. Geralt has been superb against right-handed hitting this year. And that's not good news for guys like Walton, Dunstan, Dawson, and Sandberg. Overall, the Giants have the edge in experience. But you never know. Destiny could finally be calling on this year's version of the Chicago Cubs. Well, it's not quite a done deal, but it does sound like it is awfully official. Mets manager Davey Johnson won't be back. Three years after a world championship, the wheels have fallen off the Mets wagon in New York. Davey Johnson is about to pay the price managers pay after losing seasons. General manager Frank Cashin is expected to make the firing official any time now. Such is life in baseball. Some ones you win, some ones you lose. And it happened to Jimmy Williams earlier this year. The former Blue Jay boss is on the rebound today, however. His old pal Bobby Cox has found room for Jimmy in Atlanta. Jimmy is a special assignment coach for the Braves as of today. He gets a new job on his 46th birthday. It turned out to be another short-fed cup for Canada. The Soviets bounced the Canadian team in tennis in Tokyo today. Larissa Sevchenko and Natalie Zvereva bounced Jill Hetherington and Helen Kelsey in the deciding doubles match today. It was not even close. The score is 6-love, six 6-2, six and the Canadian team at the Fed Cup in Tokyo is history. Just ahead on Sports Desk, a new deal for the best hockey player in Detroit, and a bad deal for a long-serving veteran. As well, our NHL division previews continue tonight. The story in the Atom. The action is fast and furious when the NHL plays live on TSN. The Montreal Canadiens battle the Boston Bruins in the first of over 40 games this season. The season premiere of Molson's The NHL Tonight, Monday, October 9th, starting at 7.30 Eastern on TSN. Racing, the ultimate test of a high-performance tire. That's why Yokohama tires endure the punishment of thousands of miles of wheel-to-wheel -wheel confrontation. Thousands of hours of testing and retesting because Yokohama's ongoing commitment is to bring you tires that deliver on the track and on the street. Yokohama Performance Radios, designed for your kind of performance. Last year, Nissan introduced the incredible new Z for world-class performance. The Maxima, the four-door sports car for luxury class performance, and the 240SX. Performance for the fun of it. This year, Nissan introduces the Stanza. Now you can get something completely different in a performance car. Your family.
gave up dolls for a heavy wooden racket. She gave up dating for nights of solitary practice. She's given up enough, and now it's her turn to play. <laughs> On this day in 1962, the great Whitey Ford won his 10th World Series game. Whitey beat the Giants 6-2. to two. It is our new Wednesday feature on Sports Desk. We find out what Canada's top journalists are writing about. Today, on the beat from Vancouver, veteran province columnist Jim Taylor is on the line. Jim making a pitch in Wednesday's edition for 86ers coach Bobby Leonard Doozy to be the new coach of the national soccer team. Jimmy, why? Well, I just think he's high profile. I think you can't argue with the success. They haven't lost at home in two years. They had that 46 game winning streak in the league. Um, he's insufferably handsome. He'd be great to, uh, to market. And I don't see why a man can't hold both jobs. Is there anybody else in the running? Tony Waiters, the former national coach uh, who left after 86, is very much in the running, and possibly Bruce Twomley, the Canadian Olympic team coach. But I think if Bobby wants it and the CSA is prepared to let him do both jobs, he'll get it. Some Eastern friends might wonder why you're not chasing the Blue Jays on the West Coast. I don't do trivia. <laughs> My spies do tell me that you bought season tickets, though, for the Canucks. Are they really going to be that good this year? Oh, I don't know. I bought tickets. I bought season tickets because it's a better seat than the press box. But I, I think they are going to be interesting. Uh, I question the wild-eyed enthusiasm in some quarters that has them finishing second because I don't think Edmonton or L.A. have left the league unless I just missed my notice. But yeah, they're going to be interesting. Krutov and Larionov make them make them that much better. I think it's, the Smythe Division is going to be wicked this year. And I just thought it was worth watching. Are you the same Jim Taylor who once wrote that the Soviets would be in Vancouver when pigs could fly? I really hate people with filing systems and long memories, John. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. I said that. And uh, I, I also said that Krutov and Larionov, when they finally got here, would fit in really well with the Canucks old-timers team. But they're here, and uh, outside of the fact that it screws up the Canada Cup series, uh, I'm glad to have them here. Let's go full circle and one last question. What about the Lions with Murray Pezum and Mark Gastineau? Will those two make a difference to your football out in Vancouver? Not unless one of them can play defensive halfback. <laughs> All right, Jim. On the beat with Jim Taylor from the Vancouver province, and Jim will hook up again with you soon. Nice to talk to you, Jack. <laughs> He's a beaut. NHL season opens on Thursday. It's an optimistic time for all. In Vancouver, the Canucks have to be excited about a 50% increase in season ticket sales. In Detroit, the Red Wings are happy to announce sales have been so good that Steve Iserman gets the raise he deserves. The Red Wings have given their all-star center a brand new long-term contract. Published reports say Iserman's new deal is for five years. It replaces an old contract that was signed in 1985. Iserman's old deal would have made him around $140,000 a year. However, he will now become the third highest player behind Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux. Fittingly so. The 24-year-old Iserman was the player's choice as the league's most valuable player. The contract terms are not yet available. Edmonton Oiler general manager Glenn Sather has announced that Yari Curry will become an alternate captain on the team this season, replacing Glenn Anderson. Anderson wants to reestablish himself as a dominant player in the league and doesn't want to have responsibilities of being an alternate captain. Curry joins team captain Mark Messier and the other alternate Kevin Lowe as spokesman for the Oilers both on and off the ice. The New York Rangers cut their ties with 38-year-old center Marcel Dion today. Dion, the third leading all-time scorer, will continue to look for another team. Dion, who played most of his career in Los Angeles and Detroit, had only seven goals in 37 games last year with the Rangers. And after 11 years in pro hockey, Dave Hunter is calling it a career. Hunter announced his retirement after the Oilers announced he was demoted to the minors today. Davey had a pretty good run in Edmonton. He was there for all the Oilers' glory years. The 73rd NHL season will begin with Flyer goaltender Ron Hextall in the penalty box. Hextall will watch the first 10 games on television as he serves out another suspension. Meantime, the league will call, will investigate the Flyers over another matter. Philadelphia pulled a quick retrade with the Winnipeg Jets to get Pete Peters and Keith Acton back yesterday. The NHL will check out the deal and see if it's really legal. Well, tonight we check out the Adams Division in our NHL previews. It is home of the Stanley Cup runner-ups from last year. And here is Jim Van Horn. 
Now here's an interesting race this season. A race where play within the division will be key to making or not making the playoffs. A race where Quebec will be stronger and Montreal in all probability will be weaker and where the other three teams will fit somewhere in between. Montreal has lost three fine players, Bob Gainey, Larry Robinson, and Rick Green. They do have Vesna Trophy winners Patrick Watt and Brian Hayward back. They have some capable youngsters who must prove they are ready to step in on the blue line. And they have a bunch of good, strong young forwards. They need more goals from Stefan Richer, who slumped to 25 last year. But the torch has been passed from Robinson and Ganey to Guy Carboneau and Chris Chelios. And how they carry it this year will determine how well Montreal does. In the past, the fortunes of the Montreal Canadiens were very, very closely tied to those of the Quebec Nordiques because the rivalry between the cities and the teams was second to none. In recent years, that rivalry has faded because Michel Bergeron was in New York City. But now, the Petit Tigre, or the Little Tiger, has returned. Michel Bergeron is back in Quebec. Michel Bergeron hopes to settle down a dressing room that was a mess a year ago. Guy Lafleur will help sell tickets, and Michel Goulet will help the attack now that he's fully recovered from his knee problems. Joe Sackick was on pace to be Rookie of the Year till he got hurt in midseason. And the Soviet invasion has touched the Nordiques with veteran netminder Sergei Milnikov on hand to hopefully shore up what's been a problem spot in recent years. There's a new regime at Hartford where Eddie Johnston and Rick Lee take over from Emil Francis and Larry Plo. Johnston assembled the Pittsburgh Penguins before being fired, and Lee has been a winner wherever he has coached. Peter Sidorkowicz is one of the game's best young goaltenders. David Babich needs to carry on from the fine second half he enjoyed last year, especially until the injured Ulf Samuelson returns at the end of the season. Waiters were 12th on offense and need to improve there. Yet another new head coach in Boston, Mike Milbury, succeeds Terry O'Reilly. Bruins aren't quite as big nor quite as mean as they used to be, and that might be a problem in their small rink. Andy Moog and Reggie Lemelin provide capable goaltending. Ray Bork has had an outstanding camp. But there's a transition up front where the forwards are smaller, but more creative. The Buffalo Sabres were a middle-of-the-pack outfit, 10th defensively and 13th offensively. They're solid in the nets with Clint Malarcha. They'll be better with a healthy Mike Ramsey on the blue line for a full season. Pierre Turgeon showed considerable improvement as a sophomore with 34 goals. Alex McGilney provides more speed and scoring up front, and Christian Rutu will have to do the same. Overall, this will be a tighter race than last year. 90 points will be a good total to win it, and the Nordiques will be better than 61. This race will go to the wire. Tomorrow, Jim Van Horn will preview the Patrick. Four-time Indy winner A.J. Foyt is now listed in fair condition after a crash in Charlotte, North Carolina yesterday. Foyt hit the wall and sustained head and neck injuries. However, he's tough. His crew chief says he could be released from hospital as early as tomorrow. Well, here's today's question for tickets to the Jays' Oakland game Saturday at the Sky Dome. At 37, Mike Flanagan is the oldest member of the Blue Jays' playoff roster. Who is the youngest? Give us a call, and we'll award 10 sets of two for Saturday, courtesy of our friends at Labatt's. Here's the number, area code 416. And the number, 449-3389. That's 449-3389. Just ahead on Sports Desk, a racing legend passes on. And Ontario canoeists enjoying the autumn of their lives.